The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this Wednesday, Fed Day, the 20th of September. And well, let's go through things. In my experience, it is very seldom that the Fed announcement on any particular day is like uh, it's the very it's just the very turning point of a market's trend. Usually the trend is in place and it just accelerates that trend. More importantly, what we're looking at is, if I just close that door there, more importantly what I'm looking at is, look, um, I, like, I like to time things, but if you're looking at timing, sometimes uh, there, all the clues are there and you, you either identify them and you don't act on them or you identify them as possibilities, and you miss it. So, um, I've I've got the chart here because people had asked me, would, would you would you mind just every once in a while doing your show, showing you your one, five, and ten minute charts of the E mini or whatever it is that we're looking at? So look at this potential double top right here. There's a cluster of highs in the E mini at 9:11 this morning at 95 uh, 45.08. And it holds there for about four or five bars, and then it starts to come down. You see the way the MACD turned down, stochastic uh, didn't make a correspondingly higher high, it made a lower high. On balance volume gave you the turn exactly on that bar, the, the last bar of the high. And the price comes down. It shoots lower at about nine, for some reason, I'm not sure what the what the news was, at 9.31 as the market opened. Instead of bouncing, it just shot down and it uh, screamed down to the 40, uh, it was at 44.97, yeah, 44.97.25. And then it started to move up. Um, I, I typed this in here. The, I made this the midpoint, the fulcrum with for bar synchronicity. Uh, that is bar, uh, that is the uh, plumb line right there. And I said, if it moves to the right, round about uh, 957, it should try to get back to that high. Well, a 957, it missed it by uh, 75 cents. And then it pulled back. And then there was this internal strength because the MACD was still good. The nine period moving average is still good. The, MAC, the stochastic did drop sharply, but then rallied. And what did you go to a fractionally higher high, just a, a 25 cents off that previous high, and it was a few bars late, and then it pulled down. But what did it pull down to? It pulled down to look at the 200 period moving average, how important it was right there at 840 this morning. Look how it went right through and came back and started to hold it, make this a, a, a cushion or a trampoline run. Now, someone asked me, we sometimes see you put it in a pink or a gr whatever that color is, red, um, Notation when there isn't actually a peak. Well, if you, oh, this should have been changed. What I did is whenever in the futures, whenever I get one, but especially if there are two parallel highs or two parallel lows, I say that's a possible peak because you travel in 25 cent increments. 25 cent increments, uh, I mean, that's 25 times different to a penny that you get when you're trading in stocks or almost anything else other than the futures. So I I look at, to see what happens in any of my indicators, the relative strength, the unbalanced volume, whatever, and I, I choose to use it as a phantom peak. Now, what do I mean by a phantom peak? A phantom peak just says very simply, um, this isn't really, in the Chapman Wing methodology, this isn't really a peak. But there's an alternate count that you can use, a legitimate uh, count, but you've got to have certain ingredients. The ingredients were there, so I made this a phantom peak A, phantom peak B, made a, a, a C, <clears throat> and then what happened is it went on to the D. So what happens is that D is fine, but if I go to an E, then I have to change things, and I go back and I, I change 
one of the phantom peaks to a real peak. But that's going back. That's just because I like to have the the pattern itself formulated and created to give the exact notation. So if there was a plus here when we started, I'll put in, as it's moving up, I'll put in a, an up arrow to say buy signal, probably to buy mode, that says there should be high, four higher peaks. All right. The reason why I'm mentioning this here is that you, we've got all these what I call clues. Look what happened in the five-minute chart. It went to a peak E, pull back, try to rally back again. Here the technicals are much weaker. So it's, it's struggling a little bit. Same thing in the 10-minute went to a peak G. Now, why do I talk about this? Because there are times where, where the, you either choose to utilize – all the things that you, your, your, all the tools, in other words, my big Sears and Roebuck, if uh, we don't have Sears and Roebuck anymore, my big toolbox with my unbalanced volume, MACD, stochastic, Chapman Wave, Roman candle, Chapman Wave, inside track, Chapman Wave, one-to-one um, -one expansion, falling axe, all these things. But in this particular case, let me go through this one by one. Look at this. Here's the crude oil. It's right back. Uh, on the very short term, to the highs that were made back in November of 22 at 92.81, right? It did that. It went to 92.43 in the continuous contract. So that's one little benchmark. But the highs that were made, look at the way, the high that was made at just at about 120. Look what happened way back in 2000 and this is what Crimea War, one of those wars. Um 2012 to 2014, that whole 120 area, maybe up to 120, yeah, 120, 124, that whole 20 to 24 area was extreme resistance. And then it pulled back and it, it broke down and went all the way to minus 119. I don't know if we've still got that today. Minus 916. That's changed because it gets smoothed out. In April of 2020, can you remember crude oil went negative in the futures? Okay, so here's my benchmark. It says we're getting up to a resistance point on the left that goes back to did I say July? Uh, sorry, November, November of 2022 at 92.81. So that's one out of our whole plethora, panoply of different indicators. The TLT, that's bonds. 91 .83, 91, 92.23 was the low back in August. And the low before that was, wait, wait, wait what's going on here? Where did it go? Hey, somebody stole my, my low. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, there it is. 91.85 was the low back in October of 2022. We've made a full arch. And don't forget about the H2M pattern. This is a full arch formation. And I chose to use this little doji candle right here as the midpoint at one stage. And I said, that means by um, the week of the 18th of August, we should be testing the 9185 area. But it took another week and we went down to 9223. Look at the second little, third little arch over here. I'll be back. If you want to look at support levels and resistance levels to tell us, can the Fed remain here? If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Dow's up 133, S&P's up 8, just came back some of it, but it's just holding steady, waiting for the Fed, waiting for the Fed. We've got Garrow waiting in line. Harold Garrow, how are you? I'm very good. How about you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, here, I, I want to, if you have the time, uh, I want to ask regarding that square. Um, yes. Uh, I'm, of course, you know that, you know me. I'm, I'm insuring this stock since uh, September the 7th at $56 on the daily chart when the, the, the candle hit the bottom dot and the dot moved up there. I'm still, I'm holding it. Uh, and uh, I want to have your opinion that how far this can go lower uh, how far room today there there was a news on that that uh, square joined the canadian uh, uh, the canadian what's the name uh, 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 here says, uh, square entered the canadian pot market with jane technology as, as partners that was today's news on on square and so uh, all in all how how far do you think this is going to go well, you, you know, I, once upon a time, I used to speak about a company called STZ. STZ, uh, this yes. is a company that Constellation Brands, Spirits yes. Alcohol. I remember and they, yes. and they did unbelievable. I mean, they were the leaders in the whole alcohol. Nobody could even come close to them because they did everything right. Then I read that they were taking over a company in the um, cannabis area. And I remember saying to my subscribers, uh-oh, here's a problem. This could be the very first time that they come across something that they've never been in. They'll get it right at some point, but it's going to be very costly. So in April of 2018, um, SDZ is at 236.62, plummets down to 104.28, and now has been on a very steady path. You would see that the monthly chart has the green nine-period moving average from about January of 2021, and it's just steadily yeah. made higher highs and basically lower lows. So the learning experience, I remember thinking exactly the same thing when I read that can, that um, Square, and I have no idea why they wanted to change. Well, I do. Square changed its <laughs> name to Block because they did Block. Um, their, their whole, they thought they were so cool. Block was the inside uh, um, vernacular, the word of the day, and they thought we'll be we'll, we'll be Block. Okay. Well, Blockhead should have been the title because since August, even just most recently, 
Um, they've been up, and let me just check this out. Yeah, so this is August the 4th. They hit 81.47 on a big rebound from the 55 area, and it's been straight down. So that le So basically, I'm trying to say to you that the learning, when you say to me, how far down can it go, it really depends on when they start making money, and that's going to be very difficult. I think they're getting closer to it. So with that said, all I can say is uh, if they break and they close under about 46, 50, that's serious stuff because the, the last major low was in 2020 at about 32. So let's just go one step at a time. They've got a learning curve, and they've never been in the business before, uh, so it's completely new to them because even though it's just the mechanization, the electronic movement of money, it is the industry that's part of it. So if the industry is still having a big problem, if you look at MJ, MJ had a big spike up on the news that maybe there was going to be some benefit, some uh, banking benefit, whatever it is. So far, that really ha hasn't happened. But I think it's going to become uh, an election-type story for a while, and they will be the beneficiaries at some point. So I would say to you, on a, I would rather look at it on a very short-term basis and say, do you remember that I drew this in for you? I don't know if you're looking at my charts right now, but you remember the daily chart? I have a technique that I call the propeller shaft where the price comes down sharply, but then instead of a, a little circle, it goes sideways in a rectangle formation. Yeah. And then I always say it has the potential to have an equal move from the top that I chose to the bottom and then the top of the rectangle to a new extension to the downside. And I drew this in, and we, yeah, we were talking about it, I think it was maybe three days ago, it was in the 5350s, yes, it had yes, just taken yes. out the left side low. And I said, well, if I'm correct in my in my measurements, then the idea that it would go to 49, I think I said 49.50 or 49.30, that's, right. that's on the table. So today it hit 49.20. So, and the stochastics yeah. at 4%, the MACD is very negative. No, the MACD is not as negative as it was. That's a good sign. But the stochastic has gone down to 4%, and the on balance volume is now extremely oversold. So, this is a stock with a doji candle of yesterday. If it closes under that candle, uh, it'll make the 4970 area some kind of a, a resistance. If it takes it out, it can go high and try to fill the gap. Right as we're speaking at this particular moment, it's on the cusp of either having a big candle to the downside or trying to have a small candle and then a little bit of a move to the upside, makes making the 51 area. I'm not sure the 9 PMP moving average of 5237 can be hit. But on the weekly basis, oh, it's a horrible chart and it needs a lot more work. So I think you're absolutely correct in what you've got. What I would say to you... <clears throat> If you've got your core position on, on, on the short side, money management says to me that the one-to-one -one has been reached, <clears throat> that a little bit should be taken. This is just my, my perception. It doesn't say anything about where it should go to. It's, it says what it has come to from the levels that we were talking about three, four days ago. It's hit that. So personally, I would take a little bit off right now, but I would still keep the core position. I think by today's Wednesday, by Friday at this time, during the 10, 11 o'clock time period, is going to be really important because if Square has gone below 48, anywhere in the 40, if it goes below 48, by Friday at this time, that's really ugly action. If it tries to rally, it says it's just trying to find a little bit of support and it could have a bounce, and that bounce could take it to it could take it to the 52, 53 area. But as I said, I would take just the, I, money management says take something off. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. That was excellent. 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 Thank you so much. It, it was, you, was worth for a million. I appreciate it. Okay, Thank I'm going to just yeah, go as yeah. you're about to go off. I'm just going to do one quick thing. The weekly chart has the same one to one to the downside. I'm just going to do this and say, if I'm looking at this correctly, because it has to have the same angle, it says by um, by the end of by sometime in October, the 45 level should be hit. But I'm just saying that would be a one-to-one -one measurement, just as we were doing right now. But 
just keep that in mind. So I hope that helps you. Yes, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're, that, you're the master. That, you are the master. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, have a nice day, sir. Thank you. And you Thank too. You. Thank Bye-bye. you, Garo. Speak yeah, to you soon. So, folks, this is going to be very important. So I was talking about the levels. And, you know, I like to look at other things so that it can complement what I'm thinking or negate what I'm thinking. So now have a look at this. Here is the TLT. Uh, that's bonds. It's come down. It's very close to the 92, 91 area. That's absolutely key support. The H pattern says... When you've got so many, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly in this particular trajectory, there's a good chance you go under it and then you come back into that semicircle. So we'll talk about that. I'll talk about the um, the one other thing I want to talk about was the left side, right side time price match. I'll be back in a moment. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So we had a question again about VICR. VICR is Vicar Corp. And I don't think it has anything to do with the uh, British... uh, Detective shows, the Vicar Corp, um, or uh, pastor shows. What I am looking at is a stock called Vicar Corp, and I'm going to just do this right now. Vicar Corp, V I C O R Corp, does. Oh, headquartered in Andover, Massachusetts. 
Ricocore sells its products to the power systems market, including enterprise and high-performance computing, industrial equipment and automation, telecommunications, network, oh, everything you would love to see. Infrastructure, vehicles and transportation, aerospace and defense. Oh, oh, oh. And it goes from a high of 160-something uh, back in uh, D November, December of 2021, and has a little bit of a pullback to 40. And now it's had a strong bounce, not now, but it had a strong bounce in the, uh, this is in the weekly, it went all the way from just under 40 to just under 100, and now it's gone under the 200 period moving average of 58. You see, I, I've, I've fallen for this a couple of times over the last year. I've got a stock that just has, oh, you read it and you say, oh, this is just everything that you're looking for, power systems, uh, high-performance computing, industrial equipment. Or we've got PAVE, this is infrastructure, just streaming to new highs. Uh, automation, telecommunications, if you look at the XLC, despite the fact that uh, AT&T and all these others have just been, they, they've been hammered. The XLC, which is the telecommunications ETF, they've done beautifully, network infrastructure. Vehicles, well, that was good at a certain point. Aerospace, defense, all right. Here's a stock, just on the short term, right here, it goes from this 96 area down to 50, the 57, it's a trading of 58 right now, under the 200 period moving average. All I can say is to be buying it right here. Well, I don't know if you're short or long. If you've been short, all I can say is this 200 period moving average of 50, of 60.78, that's going to become a magnet at a certain point. It's already a magnet. You can see it hit it, and that's the first time it kind of stalled, went under it, and went touched it, and now it's pulling back from it. So, yes, keep it on, on your list. What I would say to you is I'd much rather be buying, look, the Stochastic's at 8%, uh, the MACD's not good. Or maybe you've just mentioned something now to tell me what you're looking at. Uh, let me just check to see if you've updated me. Uh, I'm looking, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see anything. All right. So, hello, I'm looking at this and saying, Keep it on your list. I think it is a stock that when it, look at the move, when it has the move, it's fantastic on the way up. On the way down, it, it can have the same move on the way down. So if you are short, I don't know if you're short, I'd stay short. I don't know where you're short from, but I can tell you that 62.15, that's another four points above from where we are right now, is that that's the 14 period moving average that it hasn't closed above since, since, August, like the first or so of August when it was up in the 80s. Since then, it's gone above it or touched it many times, and it can. It's like a, it's like a, an electro electrode. It just bam, it hits it, and you get repelled. So all I can say is, this looks to me like the downside isn't quite done, but it's getting to it within four. I would say within four to six points. If it keeps going down, that could be the start of a really serious rally because of the way it had this 50, in the 50, 55 area, it's, it went there and held there for a long time. So I would not be looking at this as a buy just yet. As a buy, I'd wait for it to have a leg B, but the leg B has to be a bit stronger than just that little high that was made yesterday. I think it needs to be, let's look at it, give me a yell. If it, that, if it hits 61.10, 61 it just has to get into the 61s, and then I want to see if the stochastic has gone from 8% to 12%. And that'll be a clue to me that it's starting to make a turn, and then it has to have lift off away from the 200 period moving average. So at the moment, the 200 period moving average has become a magnet, both for the upside and the downside, and it should wiggle woggle around there for a little bit. Now, the other one I was asked about was PSTG. Now, this is an interesting postage, I think. is What is it called? It's called... Uh, Pure Storage Inc. Uh, A shares, but wasn't PST? Oh, oh, it was stamps. Stamps was the other. This is postage. Okay, yeah, I, I I followed this just every once in a while. I say, oh man, this is a look how nicely the stock does. It does have a lot of whippiness, but wow, when it gets going, it really gets going. So this is E F, and this is another A B. This is now an F 
slash C. And then what does it do? It goes D, and I'm calling this an E just for the moment. I, don't, I can make a change on this because uh, we're looking at the daily soon. Pure Storage Inc. So we'll type in Pure Storage Inc. And it's an A share. All right, and they do this data storage, etc. And let me just put this in here. Pure, well, you've told me. Pure, this just, I love it when the name tells you what it does. Ink does. And what does it do? Uncomplicated data storage forever. Pure storage. Discover a better way to interact with your data through storage. That's always modern, easy. Oh, I don't want that. What do they actually do? A provider of enterprise data flash storage solutions designed to substitute for electromechanical disk arrays. All right. So within that context, yeah, here again, it's the, it's got the, the sexiness to the to the to the wording, but um, rather let's do some technical analysis. And the technical analysis says this particular A shape pattern, straight up and then straight down in the daily chart, which is reflected as, as a peak C in the weekly chart, says. This stock is in play, is acting extremely well, but uh, that was the H pattern. Oh, let me just double check this to see if I've not done this correctly. The low was in May of 2022, 21.90, and the way well, well, April of 2023 was 22.17. Yeah, that's what my eye said, that this was a higher low, and this is that beautiful pattern that I'll look at which is the arch formation. In fact, we could even do this. We could even think that this is peak A, peak B, C, and D. So whatever it is, it's gone to a D or an E in the weekly, monthly chart, peak C in the, now the way I can count this, peak C in the weekly chart, and this spike to the upside. Okay, now you, you didn't say what you're doing, so I... Um, uh, okay, so... As it stands right now, it's been impacted by the most recent pullback in the market. But I like to pull these things out to have a good look at it. And it says that this whole upside consolidation phase, and I'm going to do just draw it in like this. Okay. That's just basically a consolidation. It's a big number. It goes from 34 to 40. That's six points. That's uh, almost 18, 20%. That's a big number. So I want to do a little bit of work on this group space because I, I like everything about this. I'm just wondering if that move to the upside in September and then giving it back, was that an aberration or is this telling me a story about it? I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, we're back, and uh, a couple of questions came in, but in the time. So PSTG, which is Pure Storage, Inc., A shares. Look at this beautiful sideways uh, consolidation to the upside. So consolidation is going to be a downside, and the upside it could be just be a breather. It just takes a long time before it's going to break to the upside. Invariably, these long, narrow rectangles, and actually, except for this one spike to the bottom, and that started a new move to the upside, and I have to call that an A. It could be an A that fails. It's very unusual, but that that isn't an E because you started a new buy mode that went to peak A, B, C, D there, and you started one here, and this went much lower. So there's, this is an A which can fail, but it's still an A. That's an A, that's an A, and this little spike right here is an A. If it takes out that low, it's a failure pattern. So it's holding very well. Is up uh, 19 cents today, 36.16. It's in an area of, we've seen a number of these data storage companies do quite well. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them have done extremely well. So I like it. Now, I'm not sure if you're looking to buy it. Now, I should have asked you what, what you're doing, but I haven't got that right now. Let me just double check to see. Okay, so you've just got that. Uh, I think you put in something more than that. Ooh, I'm trying to find you. This link, yeah, the VICR. We got that, then I got the next one, which was Duncan Steve. And let me just go through these. All right, I'm not, I'm not seeing it right now. I couldn't, uh, but I'll, I'll just do it in any case, whether or not you want. I should buy, sell, or hold. That's really what I want to be doing right now. So, in this particular instance. That spike to the upside, I mean, going from 34, was that a round number low? 34.01, uh, just missed a round number low on the 31st of August. And three days later, it's at 40.50. And I would have to say, and almost, uh, I mean, a six-point rally like that on a $34 stock, about a 17% that, gain, that's really quick. Now it's given back a chunk. I don't like that. It says this was an aberration. This was news-related, and now that news has just dissipated. So this is what I'm looking at. I like the stock. I would not be shorted because I think it's holding extremely well. Yeah, I could retest 34, but there's a risk here because um, the way the 9 period moving average in the weekly chart is so strong, it says that the, the, there's enough internal strength to have sudden spikes at least to the 3780 uh 38 area and, and that would if you're short that's not really what you really want to see and the fact that it stopped the decline for two sessions even though they're not big bars says if it takes out one more time takes out the low of the 18th a few days ago of 35 36 close and under 35 that's a big problem, and it should go all the way back and test 34. So I like it on a longer-term position. I'd actually say to you, I'd consider a long-term call. I'd go out, today is uh, September the 20th. I'd go out October. 
I'd probably want to go to November and I'd go in the money. I'd, I'd like to buy a 35 in the money call. I don't know yet if this is the plan. I'm just saying, and I don't know whether you're going long or short. I think this has upside potential to at least double top at that peak C level, or maybe make a leg D. Um, and I, it should be before it takes out 34. It, it needs to be. If it's, 34 is taken out, it's going to take a lot longer. But in the meantime, I like it. I don't think I'd be considering a short, even though the, the nine period moving average flipped the gain to negative. But that strength in the weekly chart and monthly charts is, you know, it's it's been in the sweet spot for a little while, and it doesn't seem to be going out of it right at this moment. So I like it. I don't, wouldn't short it. I wouldn't buy it right here. I'd need some evidence to say that it, it's now finding its strength again. And I think I might even have to wait for the nine period daily to go back to positive, and that'll take a move to about 38. So it's two points. I just say hold off for now. So I'm not very good for you right now to ask me what should I do. All I'm saying is I would do nothing. I'd have to wait unless you're in the positions. If you're in the short position, a close below um, 30, 35 would say continue to, to the low that was made back here at the beginning of September. And if you're all long, just watch out because a close under that says be careful. If you're long, you want to see. 36.56, the nine period moving average, uh, the yeah, the nine period moving average hit very quickly and it's at 36.20 right now. Next question is, as I post below earlier this AM, AQST. I don't know if I've got time to read everything that you wrote, but I'm going to just put AQST here. Oh, look at that nice bounce. This is a Quest of Therapeutics Inc. Biotech made a peak D way back in April in the 2.60 uh, area. And it came all the way back down to the slow of 1.35, 1.33, went to a peak A, and it's given that back. And the weekly chart, 9 p moving average, just about to flip negative. The daily has had a nice big spike off the 200 period moving average. You know, uh, multiple potential trial. You see, when you're talking trial outcomes, that's something complete. Oh, Epi, Epi, EpiPen? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, versus EpiPen. Yeah, you know, all I can say is that the chart itself has got a lot of speculation written into it. I, I would have said this looks kind of like a biotech stock from the from the monthly chart. And even this big move up, where does it close today? It's a dollar seventy three. I can just tell you this. I the FDA approval, that's something completely different. But just on a chart pattern, the way that this two hundred period moving average has been on the daily chart has been such a magnet. It just says it's going to lead, need a lot more by Monday, this coming Monday, that's two and a half sessions time. It needs to be trading above this candle right here on the 23rd of August, it went to 186. So that's what I'm saying for you right now. Uh, it's not showing me the, these sudden pop ups in a biotech are very mysterious. And I, I have the, a lot of trepidation looking at them. But it is nice action today. Absolutely. Um, and all I can say is, if it's in this particular field, uh, EpiPen, if it's if it's if it's a competitor, um, keep, yeah, you're right. Absolutely, keep your eye on this because that's a huge field. All right, but oh, and the other thing is, at any point in the next week and a half, let's call it all the way through the end of September, if it closes underneath 130, 147, if it closes under 143, then you got to consider that the lowest was made on the 29th of June. Of 133, that becomes a target. I, it doesn't look like it wants to do that right now. It's really treating this 200 like a like a magnet at 1.60. Hope that helps you. Okay, so a couple of questions came in. Basil, can you look at some of the gold stocks? So look, ASA. Uh, most people don't have ASA. I've, I'm originally from South Africa. There's an, um, um, a gold company. It's like a it's like a fund that has, I think, five or six gold, um, South African gold stocks. ASA, Gold and Precious Metals Limited, trading at uh, 14 or 51. See, it's kind of stuck here, but it is trying to form yet another cup formation, and it's up 21 cents at 14.51. So let's just say, not just by the end of the day, but on Friday, and that will really change the monthly chart from being an H pattern to a more positive pattern. I did draw this in as a potential earlier where it goes from an arch formation and makes a cup formation but these three candles are very weak 
So I'm just going to change this right now, and I'm going to say there is the potential to move higher, but unless ASA actually closes above right there, 50 moving average, if it closes above 50.80 in the next couple of days, that's much better action. I'll be back with a couple of people. This is Dr. Basil Jeff with Tiger Technicians. Our guys up 152. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, so I had a question about RCUS. This also kind of looks like a biotech. Let me just see what it does. Um, there we go. This is, what is it called? Hmm. Can I see it? Arcus. Oh, I can't even see it. It's just too faint. I must figure out what to do about that. Is this the biosciences? Yeah, Arcus Biosciences. Oh, I said it looks like a biotech stock. You see this pattern? It looks exactly like the one we were looking at just a moment ago with that big spike and it's given it back with an arch formation. So I, I don't know if you're in it or not. I would keep this on my list because look at the way it made a peak. A, B, C. Look at the rhythm. It means that they're giving. It almost looks like they give options every every month. They give out options to their, their employees to keep the business afloat. Um, I, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this. You see the 200 period moving average at 21.04. It's like a magnet. It goes above and it goes below. It's like a sine wave. It just keeps wiggling around it. Let me come back to it tomorrow. I don't see anything right now, and I, I would prefer um, to have 
Yeah, the technicals right now are weakening, but it's not like it's so weak that you'd want to short it or anything, even though it's a 20, 20, $21 stock uh, at minus 16 today. I'm going to hold off on this. It, it just it, It's a biotech stock, and I want to look at the rooms. I'd say another one week, and then I would actually start to consider a buy because every fourth week or fifth week, it has this big spike to the upside over the weekly 200 period moving average. Let's give it a day or two, and I want to put in uh, – uh, review Thursday. Remind me Thursday and Friday, and then early next week. Let's see if it's got that rhythm. Okay. Before we go, uh, I just want to say, if the, let's just make it as simple as possible. Yeah. After the Fed speak, let's call it at 3 p.m. If at 3 p.m. the Dow is over 130 points higher or 130 points lower, it's giving you direction. If the if the dollar moves back over 50 ticks, that gives it. If gold moves up, dollar. That's a shortly change.